had a guy walk in today. So the auction was hypothetically, I don't know, like say 11 o'clock, right? Might have been 11, might have been 12, 11 o'clock. Anyway, cut a long story short. The auction has started. A guy walks in, past everyone, walks to the front door. The auction's being held outside and he turns around and just goes in. I actually say, sir, please don't go in. There's no one in the house. The auction's going. He goes, no, I want to have a look. I said, sir, you can have a look at the end of the auction. I mean, think about it. There's no one inside the house, right? He could go in and, you know, steal things. He said, no, I want to go in. Anyway, I go over to him. I said, listen, uh, the auction's on. Let's just finish in five, ten minutes. If it hasn't sold, or I said, even if it has sold, I'll get you through. He turns around and he says, no, I want to look at it now. It's a public auction. I said, it's a public auction, but it's a private property. End of story. I said, you wait. When this auction's finished, a real estate agent will walk you through in the house and you can have another look, okay? Or have your first look. He says to me, he's going to report me to the government. So I look forward to him contacting the Office of Fair Trading on Monday to tell him that uh, he's reporting me because I wanted to not let him in the house till the auction was finished because there was no one in the house. And then get ready for this. The story gets even more exciting. Property doesn't sell. Um, they then say, let's take you through the property. What's your name? What's your mobile? No, I'm not giving it to you. Like, seriously, what do some of these buyers think that you can walk into people's houses without giving your details? And he just kept on saying, oh, it's a public auction. It's a private property. Someone lives in the house, someone's house. And quite frankly, uh, in the end, it all got sorted. Uh, the vendor says, I don't want you in my house. End of story. Anyway, let's get back into real estate results. Um, today, I did nine auctions. Out of the nine, six sold. Um, I actually ended up doing uh, seven auctions. One um, did not, I'll just decline this. One did not sell, uh, one sold prior, and one uh, was withdrawn from auction. Um, so, yeah, whatever that is, 60%. Um, and I've got to say to you that, to me, yeah, my favorite auction of the day was a property that uh, sold in Marrickville, a three-bedroom unit in Schwebel Street. You can watch that one online. A three-bedroom unit that's like 50 years old, right? Nothing flash, right? No brand new, no elevator, just an old unit in an okay street sold for $1.3 million. Um, remarkable, but it was beautiful inside. It was nice inside. So it's a case of, hey, if I can move in and not spend a cent, I might pay overs for it. That's why, team, don't do what my last auction had, and that is a investment property with tenants that weren't looking after the property, and it was an absolute mess. And, man, never sold because people don't want to go in and renovate. Gone are the days where give me the fixer-upper, let me build my dream, give me the blank canvas. No, nah, they want the ready-made product. And i tell you who does well, brand new ones, because they've got that, you know, builder's responsibility to fix things if they go wrong. The other thing that I find interesting is I had to delay an auction um, because there was a buyer, again, wanted to go through, have a, you know, final look and I get all that sort of stuff I understand it and then ends up reading the contract for around five minutes I don't even think the person knew what they were reading because when I asked them I said can I help you in any way would you like me to steer you in the direction of what you want to see he's just flipping through like he's reading some boating magazine I didn't even know I said boating magazine. So that guy got upset as well. And he didn't bid. 
That's a, there's a, he didn't even register. He didn't even register. He did not even register. Um, so, um, yeah. And I've got to say to you, like, if you're about to put a property on the market and it's an investment property, I honestly think, you're going to get far more money for it if the tenants aren't really meticulous in the way they keep it, is that, you know, you style it, put it in there, I mean, or give an incentive to your tenants to actually keep it clean during the uh, um, um, marketing campaign. Give them, you know, half a week's um, rent discount for the whole campaign each week. They only pay half the rent or whatever because you'll get it in your sale price or if you, you know, decide that you want to sell it with vacant possession and actually uh, have it plain, I would go in and style it. You'll get more money. Um, so, team, that's the story. Anyway, six out of nine. Uh, next week is really the last week of auctions before Easter. I don't expect there to be any stock in Easter. Then we're going to have lower volumes because you've got school holidays, Easter, Anzac Day, that three, four weeks, a bit of a funny period. And then what you'll find is you'll get another run of auction campaigns happening from, you know, around mid to late April, right all the way through to uh, June. So team, that's the story. Good to see you all. And I'm obviously very, very happy today because, you know, those of you that follow me on a daily basis know that I had a cancer test yesterday and uh, it was all clear. Of course, I'm always mindful of it. I've had cancer three times in my life and um, I'm just over the moon that um, uh, my story hasn't gone as per what the prognosis said it would be with my diagnosis. And uh, very, very happy, of course. I still, you know, uh, have a little bit of sadness. And uh, I, don't, I no longer have survivor's remorse. I had a bit of survivor's remorse with uh, the death of my brother, my young brother, who was my best friend. And uh, he only had cancer once and died very quickly. And uh, I'm still gutted, but I don't have survivor's remorse. Anyway, team, signing off.